Hello, this is Daniel Dolphin with Dolphin Horsemanship, and we're here to do a video on how to lay out a round pin today. <clears throat> the first step for this is the decision making, the, the putting things down on paper and seeing what makes sense. Uh, I would say that the most important first step for you to take there is to figure out the size that you want this pin to be. Um, we are talking a round pin right now, not an arena, so um, I would generally say, this is my opinion, uh, a 60 foot round pin would be what I would go for if I'm looking for a pin mainly to ride in. Um, the, the pin that I'm actually going to be building and on this uh, for this video is going to be a 60 foot round pin. Um, if my purpose however was to mostly do free lunging, groundwork, starting colts and things like that for me personally the ideal size pin for that is about a 45 to 50 foot round pin. Um, for the amount of pressure that I use with horses that tends to be kind of the sweet spot if it gets to be like if you're trying to do a lot of groundwork in a 60 foot pin you're going to get worked to death. You're going to be having to do a lot of moving, running to the horses to keep them moving. Uh, whereas if you get into a, a much smaller pin than that, let's say you're in like a 35 foot pin, uh, if you get some very sensitive horses, that's going to be an awful small area uh, for them. They're going to need a little more space to get away from you and to relax and settle in. Um, a less than 45 foot pin, I, there's really only two reasons why I would intentionally build that. Uh, one would be if I am someone who's doing a lot of true bronx. Uh, what I just said a second ago about the pressure does come into play, but if you give a, a real bronc a, a 45 or 50 foot pin, they have enough distance to line out across that thing and really hit that wall or, or try to jump out. Uh, more like a 35 foot pin with deep sand and, and they're gonna not be able to do that hopefully not hurt themselves and, and with good horsemanship we will get them to settle down now again I, I would you know if I had a smaller pin like that ideally I'd be working the horse in there for a few days and then we're going to a little bigger pin because they've settled down and now we're more on the normal deal uh, the only other reason I would do less than a 45 foot round pin is if I only had one location to do it in and it only allowed for a smaller pin than that. Uh, the other videos that we have on YouTube of the, the pin in the indoor arena there, that was actually about a 42 foot round pin and it wasn't actually round. I, I really hated that round pin. Uh, it, it it was problematic in a lot of ways but for the space that we had it was, and th that pin was already built when I, I moved to that place. Uh, what, I wasn't the one that laid it out. so. Okay, that location. Uh, other factors that I would definitely want to bring into there, the primary one would be drainage. Um, I'm in South Louisiana, we get more than 65 inches of rain a year annually. This particular spring uh, has been a very wet spring. Uh, we're now early July. If I had a round pin outside that didn't have good drainage, I would very literally have not been able to work a horse in it since about March. Um, and if you're a horse trainer, that's a, that's a big deal. So drainage would probably be the first thing I would be looking at. Now, I know some of you in other parts of the country don't get nearly that much rain, but uh, it definitely is a consideration regardless. Proximity. If I had plenty of space and good drainage, I would obviously want to be able to put my round pin as close to the barn and where the horses are as possible. Uh, the next thing I would be considering would be other environmental factors besides rain like shade, sun, and wind. Uh, here in South Louisiana, uh, if I could have a round pin in the shade, I would take that every time. So maybe I've got a nice big tree on the property not too far from the barn and it is in a a high area that drains well. I may want to, let's say I'm someone who gets off work at five, I come home, I want to work my horses, I would probably put my round pin on the east, northeast portion of that tree so that in the evenings when the sun is in the west, southwest, I have got as much shade as possible on my round pin. Uh, likewise, maybe I'm in an area of the country where it's colder and we have a big north wind a lot of times 
maybe I would try to put my round pin just to the south of my barn so that the barn is blocking the north wind and again giving me more useful time to use my pin and in the sun. So, okay, we'll go to the next steps. All right, now that we know where we want to have our round pin and the size of it and all of that, it's time to do our math so that we can get our materials list. Uh, I'm going to go over some basic geometry here. Uh, kind of assume everybody could use a little refresher. If not, skip ahead. But I'm going to work you through exactly how I figure out all of these things. So the first thing we'll need to know is our circumference, which is the distance totally around the round pin. Just to define it, our diameter is the distance across going through the center. So that's, that's the size we probably found in the first portion here. For instance, if we decided a 60 foot round pin was what we needed, that's a 60 foot diameter that we were talking about. If a 45 foot round pin was what we thought, then a 45 foot diameter is what we had decided. The radius is half of the diameter or the distance from the center point to the outside edge. We will also need the mathematical number pi. We're going to round that off to 3.14, which is plenty close enough for what we're doing. Uh, the formulas that we're going to need, the formula for the circumference is pi d, or 3.14 times the diameter. The area is pi r squared, or the radius times itself, times pi. And then the volume is the area times the depth in feet, which will give us the volume of sand or, or whatever material we want for footing in cubic feet. We will also need to convert that to yards. So uh, the conversion there is that 27 cubic feet equals one cubic yard, and, and I should have, uh, yeah, that should be cubic yards. Okay, now we'll run you through the actual math. Okay, in our example, we're going to be using a 60-foot round pin, the pin that I'm going to be building uh, on camera here, right after I finish all of this, is going to actually be a 60-foot pin. So this is the math I needed. To figure the circumference, we're going to do pi d. So that's 3.14 times 60, and that is 188.4 feet. Uh, that's an important number. Let's say, for instance, that I was going to be using 10-foot panels and I had an 8-foot gate. If I were to do an 8-foot gate, I could subtract that off of this number, leaving me roughly 180 feet. So 18 10-foot panels and one 8-foot gate and its accompanying post would perfectly complete a 60-foot round pin. All right? <clears throat> So that's the materials we need for, for walls. Now likewise, maybe I have two six-foot gates. Maybe I'm using eight-foot panels or 12-foot panels. or you know That could be cut up a lot of different ways. I'm just, just showing you why it's necessary. Uh, we would also need to find out the, the volume of sand that we would need to put in the pen. So let's say that we want four inches of sand. First, we need to find the area. That's going to be 3.14 times the radius squared. So 30 squared times pi, that's going to give us 2,826 square feet. Turn that into volume. We need to multiply our area times the depth. So we're wanting 4 inches. I'm converting that to 0.34 feet. Uh, 4 inches would be 1 third, or 4 divided by 12, right? which in decimal equivalent would be 0.3 repeating. I'm simply rounding up to 0.34 so that I'm sure that I have enough sand in the end. And that number would be 960.84 cubic feet. I tend to stay pretty close on my numbers and then I round at the end. You will find if, if you're rounding off throughout here, like if I change that to 961, you know, I'm going to be a little more off in the end. I, I can be right on the money here and then be conservative in the end. Well, I like to do it anyway. Um, now to convert that, we have 960.84 cubic feet. We divide that by 27, our conversion factor here, and that gives us 35.6 cubic yards of sand. 
So a 60 foot diameter round pin is going to take about that much sand to give you 4 inch depth of sand throughout the pin. Um, now, just practically speaking here, dump trucks tend to come in 20 yard, 14 yard, and 8 yard sizes. So, I could get a 20 yard truck and a 14 yard truck and that would deliver me 34 yards of sand and I would practically see no difference in in that spread out over 60 feet than if I actually got my 35.6 yards or 35 and a half yards of material. And just to give you an idea of how much it changes as you get a bigger diameter, a 45 foot round pin would only require about 19 and a half yards. So as you go up and you start, let's say we're doing a 150 foot square arena, you're talking a lot of sand to get good fitting in that thing. So it might be a consideration when you're deciding how big of a pin and what your budget is. So, Okay, that's how to figure out how much materials you need to build your pin. Other steps that we're going to need to take in, in sort of the process of how to build this pin, and I have one missing I'll, I'll talk about in the end because your particular situation depends where in here it would fit. The first thing I would do on my actual site, we've located our site and everything, I want to find where the center of that pin is. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to set a post. Maybe a T-post goes there, maybe a wooden post, but something pretty permanent goes in that spot and it does not get removed until we are done. Um, that is a major, major thing, especially if you want this pin to come out actually round and symmetrical and all of that. And I can promise you a, a pin that's off just a little bit. If you have one side of this thing that let's say is in a foot or two, uh, it will affect the way horses work in there. So this is it's again seems very simple but do not underestimate how important it is to mark the center of that pin correctly with something permanent so that your next step your circumference comes out well what we would do once we have our center post set we'd simply put a rope around it and then we can get some inverted marking paint find our let's say 60 foot pin we have a 30 foot rope on there we hold our can of paint at the end of that rope we walk a circle around and that's going to have sprayed a perfect 60 foot circle around our post our next step would be to mark our post holes and set our posts uh, the final step would be to put up the sides and everything and then hang the gate um, the step that I do not have included in here would be the actual delivery of the material and, and this is the reason let's say I'm gonna have a 10 or a 12 foot gate on this round pin well it would be easy once my pin is built to open that gate and a dump truck could back right in there and dump the material right into the pin um, but let's say I only have a four foot gate on there and now I can't get a truck in there I can't get a tractor in there there's no way to, to put that material in so depending on my situation is depending on where I'm going to have my material delivered. If I'm going to have a small gate and nothing can get in there, then when I mark my center and my circumference before I set my post holes, or maybe I have half of my posts set, I need to have my truck come in and deliver my sand and everything. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be moving it in by a wheelbarrow and a shovel, and, and trust me, that's a labor-intensive way to do it. Uh, so, those are, are kind of the, the broad steps necessary and now we will cut away and we'll actually show you how to put it up. We've already shown you how to do the math and the numbers and come up with everything that you need. Here are some of the specific tools that I recommend that you have to actually lay out the pin. So the first thing would be some sort of a device to stake. Um, one of the indispensable things that you're going to have to do is set a stake to mark the center of the pin and that stake will not move until you're done. Um, if I'm also going to be staking where gate posts go and some things that can't be moved once we've done it. So I would highly recommend you get some little packet of stakes. You can use T-posts, screwdrivers, sticks that you cut off a tree or whatever you have around the place. That'll work fine, but a nice packet of stakes is a handy thing to have. The next indispensable item that we're going to need is some type of a measuring device for 
a 60 foot round pin, all I really am going to have to measure is a 30 foot length of line. So I don't need anything this big that will go to 200 feet. But I'm also going to be laying out an arena behind this round pin and so I will need something longer. But a 30 foot tape measure would work fine for, for a small round pin project. The next item that you're absolutely going to have to have is some type of a line. Um, this is just plain mason's twine. It's pretty cheap, like $5 for 250 feet of it. Lots of things you can use this for. Uh, but, but we're going to take this line and put it around that stake and use it to draw a perfect circle. So you're going to need some sort of a rope to do that. You will need a hammer of some kind to drive your stakes in the ground. One item that that you could do this project without but I would highly recommend that you do buy is a can of inverted marking paint. This is the same stuff that the people in your town who mark cable lines and sewer lines and all that use. It has the spray nozzle coming straight out of the top of the can rather than 90 degrees like a typical can of spray paint and this will allow me I'll show you to use it but this is going to allow me to draw a perfect circle on the ground around the center of my round pin so I know exactly where every post and panel should go. Uh, Six dollars, very, very well spent to make sure that you get a perfectly round pin. All right, we'll lay out the pin now. Okay, the very first step in laying out your round pin is finding where the center is and setting a post. This particular location, we have a ditch going around this area of the pin, and we, we definitely don't want to encroach on that ditch. So I've measured 30 feet this way and 30 feet this way and, and my stake is good as far as those go. But I need to check the total circumference of the pin to be sure everything is fine. I may need to wind up moving this stake a few feet some direction. So the way that I do that is with my mason's twine. I just want to make a loop in the end with a simple overhand knot and I want a fairly large loop. I want it much bigger than the size of my post so that as I walk around it will very freely turn around the post. If this were to bind on the post then it's going to be wrapping itself and I'm actually going to be measuring a downward spiral rather than a true circle. So this is a key step. We've got our 30 foot string. What, what I like to do is tie a loop in the end of my string just as we did around the stake. And 30 feet is about the middle of my loop. So my, my total string is actually a few inches long, but by the time I put my can of paint in there, it's going to be just right. And being off an inch or two either direction really isn't significant in a project like this. So I did in fact have to move my stake about two feet to the south uh, as I put this rope around and I, I went all the way around. And so now I'm pretty comfortable with it. And, and just so you know, so far we've got a grand total of about five minutes in this project of putting this thing down and finding the middle of this. So, so this is not something that should take a great deal of time, okay? So now we're going to get our, our can of inverted spray paint and we're going to mark out the actual circumference. So you can't spray all the way from the waist. You will have to duck walk and look a little funny, but most definitely worth doing. Okay, I wanted to talk just a little bit more about layout. <clears throat> we are going to be having the main outdoor arena just on the other side of this round pen that we're building for y'all. And, and so as such, 
the main entrance to the arena is through this round pin. So everybody will have to come in and, and open this gate and then the next gate to get into the outdoor arena. And so everybody riding will have to go through two gates to get into the outdoor arena and I, I kind of set that up on purpose. I thought it would be a handy feature to have every horse have to open a couple of day, gates every day. We're also going to reverse them so you'll have a right hand gate and a left hand gate to open and practice every single day going in and out. Uh, because these two pins must align in a certain way, Besides my center mark for the arena, the location of the gate has to be perfectly in the corner of the arena. So when I start building this pin and, and sinking my post holes, that gate will be the first thing that I sink. Everything else will fall wherever it falls around that gate. So this is why I, I, I kind of am encouraging y'all to, to really pay attention to how you lay things out. The outdoor arena here is what would best be described or when it's built it will be sort of a rounded square. So we went and found all four corners. Uh, one of them theoretically would be inside the 60 foot round pin but then we round it where that gate will be. I just want to say that as you're laying something like a square out it's really important that you check your diagonals to be sure that you don't have a square that's leaning as more of a trapezoid type shape. With this particular place, y'all can't see it, but we have a row of paddocks and a little road that's just right here. We have another road going right there and then a hay building right there. The human brain would want to assume that the angle intersection of these two roads is a 90 degree. And so when I went to set up the pin, I was kind of going off of this road. Well, as I'm checking my diagonals, I find that these roads are not at a 90 degree angle so my arena is going to look to the human eye like it's cattywampus in between these roads but it's far more important to me that the arena itself be symmetrical and work right for the animals than look right to the people not at all an uncommon thing in, in different locations that you're going to run into a situation like that so as the old carpenter adage goes, measure twice, sink posts once. Okay, we've got our first gate post hole dug. I'm not going to show you how to dig a hole. Uh, an auger on the back of a tractor or a little beaver type unit is, is the Cadillac way to go. We're using pretty good old post hole diggers, but either way will work. Um, as far as posts go, like this is a six inch round post going to be hanging a 10 foot gate on it. My experience, six foot post is plenty good for a 10 foot gate. A four post kind of will work, but it's, it's, it's iffy. Um, but you don't need a 10 inch post to hang a 10 foot gate. That, that's way overkill. Likewise, um, like for a six inch post, I'm going to be digging about a 10 inch hole where you'll have two inches of concrete all the way around. That's plenty. You don't need to dig a great big hole for a post like this because it winds up too strong at the ground and it's just going to snap off at the ground if you get any bind. All you're trying to do is make the surface area of the post larger so that when weight comes on it, the leverage doesn't, doesn't uproot the post. That's what you're trying to accomplish. Um, we'll show you in just a second how to space out gate posts and make that work where you don't line up with a big gap or a gate that won't clear the post. All right, we're continuing the story of laying out the round pin. We'll focus on a few of the tools that we've got. Old fashioned post hole diggers. Uh, I used that, those diggers to sink these two gate posts right here and that took me about an hour and a half in this hard clay soil. So, we got a little smarter and we rented this auger. Uh, I have used to own a lawn landscaping company and I have built literally miles and miles of fence and I used to own exactly this type of auger. It's called a Little Beaver. 
I will say that it is far superior to any other type of auger made. I would rather have this than the auger on the back of a tractor. I would rather have this than the two men augers. Uh, this is a one man deal and it, it really works quite well. You can get different size augers. So that's a 12 inch that's on it right there for setting this big creosote gate post pole. And then we've got an eight inch auger right here uh, for the, the smaller uh, four by four posts and four by six posts. So. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend this. Has cost me $85 for the weekend, but uh, probably the best money I'll spend on the whole arena. Landscaping business, I happen to own a concrete mixer, which does make this much, much easier. We're putting about a bag of concrete per post hole. Um, I will say I've seen tons of people do the, uh, we've got wet uh, moisture in the bottom of the hole, so we just pour in a dry sack, or maybe we pour a water hose on top of it, and, and in theory, it'll mix itself. I can tell you, I've personally experimented with that and dug up those those types of uh, poles to see what the concrete looked like, and it, it stays powdered and nasty in the ground. It is a completely ineffective way of doing it. It is an absolute waste of concrete. If you're not gonna actually mix the concrete to a proper consistency and pour it in the hole, then there's absolutely no point in pouring concrete in the hole. Um, one other little thing that's, that's an absolute blessing for this, you can see that one's a little busted, but that is an actual level gauge. And so sometimes looking at it like this particular, this big gate pole looks like it's off, but it's an optical illusion with the ground. Level is level and water, the bubble on that tells you when this is actually level. Uh, so that is, a three dollar investment that will make all of your gates uh, open easily rather than always swinging to one side.